The last video in the series of potassium homeostasis is about hyperkalemia. And I'm going to go through the basics again. So the daily requirement is 100 milli equivalent of potassium. It goes to the intestine and then gets excreted uh, through the uh, GI tract and through the kidney and also can happen through the skin and the throat and it will be distributed in the interstitial space. So in the kidney, it's 90%. Uh, in the GI tract, 10% just to make it easy and 2% in the interstitial space. Okay. In the kidney, it gets excreted by the effect of aldosterone and the distal convoluted tubule and also the collecting duct. And in the GI tract, it can have into diarrhea and vomiting as well, or normally 10% will be excreted. Normally, the potassium is kept inside the cell more than outside. Okay. And this gets affected or changed by the effect of insulin and beta agonist. And also, obviously, change and the pH of the blood. So a patient has acidosis, the potassium will go outside and will lead to hyperkalemia. So when we define the term hyper and hypokalemia, it's based on the serum potassium and not the intracellular potassium. So talking about the causes of hyperkalemia, increased potassium level, we can talk about the intake of the potassium, which is increased intake of potassium can lead to increase of the potassium level or the serum potassium level. However, this is not all of the case. Our body is able to maintain it unless we have a problem such as kidney issue, which is mainly excretion, and then you will have high potassium level. That's why renal failure patient will be on a low potassium diet. Okay. On the other side, if there is decreased excretion, and this can happen if you have any issue with the kidney, including chronic kidney injury, acute kidney injury, if a renal tuber has to do type 4, or if the patient is taking potassium sparing diuretics, such as spironolactone or NSAIDs or ACE inhibitors, okay? And also a shift to potassium to outside the cell, this can happen with metabolic acidosis and hyperglycemia. So metabolic acidosis and hyperglycemia can lead to that as well. Okay, so we talked about the hyperkalemia clinical picture. It can affect on three things in the body. That would be the heart muscle and the muscles. So we talked that the function of the potassium early was about a muscle, including the heart muscle and voluntary muscle and nerves as well, the nerve conduction and also the fluid balance or the kidney, right? So in the heart muscle, hyperkalemia, and then I think we explained this as, as well, it can lead to flaccid paralysis of the heart muscle and this is why potassium can be used as a cardioplegic agent in the cardiothoracic surgery. It can also lead to some ECG changes and that will be starting to more systematically from the P wave, it can be absent. From the QRS, it can be wide. And also from the T wave, it will be tall and peaked T wave. And the muscles, it can lead to cramps, paralysis, and being flaccid. And in the GI tract, it can lead to, if you have high potassium, it can lead to sort of ileus or uh, constipation. So anorex, uh, sorry, not ileus, actually, hypokalemia can lead to ileus. So it will lead to hyperactive bowel and abdominal pain and diarrhea. We also discussed the management before, I'm just going to go through it quickly. So your target here is to protect the heart and to move the potassium level. And if you failed, you need to do hemodialysis for the patient. How to protect the heart? By giving calcium gluconate 10%, uh, or 10 milli of the 10%. We can give insulin, we can give sodium bicarb and salbutamol to move the potassium inside the cell. And finally, we can do hemodialysis if the patient has persistently high potassium level. So that was the potassium homeostasis. We talked about the function of the potassium and uh, the risks of having hyper and hypokalemia and how to deal with both of them in terms of treatment and also the uh, hormones or the enzymes that can affect the potassium level in the body. And we stressed on the importance of doing a protective mechanism to the heart by giving calcium gluconate if the patient had hyperkalemia.